Okay, on the last episode, we was with Gene Patterson. Um, we're with him still again on this episode. Um, the last episode, we talked about how he kind of got started in the industry and how he worked with the Breen Brothers and then how he actually got to be an employee with Bigfoot. Um, in one of our earlier episodes, we did a, a thing with Scott Hess, and there's this footage of you racing Scott. He was in Hercules. You were in, I think, Bigfoot 6. Yes. And you both neither one of you lifted you both wanted to win and you simultaneously rolled over tell us a little bit about that your mindset and how that all ended up happening and then even tell us how it was when you had to call the big yeah. man well <laughs> unfortunately or fortunately yes it was bigfoot number six um and it was an ed hart show and ed as i mentioned earlier in the earlier episode about his association with NTPA and TNT, but Hart knew that Monster Trucks was going to be big, so he started booking some smaller areas like the fairgrounds in Columbus, Ohio, and he was making just an all Monster Truck show. And there was a lot, the Breen Boys was there. John had a Mad Dog truck and he had a truck called Wild Hair, which was the old Stomper Bully truck. Um, they done a little reconfiguring and <clears throat> excuse me and Bobby drove it they needed big names Bigfoot was a big name still is a big name they brought Bigfoot to the event and I was lucky enough to drive it and um, Scott Hess Steve Hess I mean it was two sets of cars I believe mm -hmm. okay. um, and it was a it was cars there wasn't these long ramps going up to the cars, so <laughs> you had to drive over the cars and the second set, a lot of guys was flying over the cars, and it came down to me and, and Scott, and um, I knew Scott had big horsepower. He was known for huge horsepower. I didn't know that he was as crazy or as me, <laughs> but Bigfoot, when we rolled into arena, we were, with being sponsorship from Ford at the time, we were expected to win. We were again the elite fleet and we went into every race wanting to win knowing that we had the best equipment that was there we had a huge staff mechanics body men at the shop in st louis when we rolled out of hazelwood missouri we went to win and and the, i wanted to be a part of the winning team and as i jumped the second set of cars i drove like jim kramer did and Scott and a lot of us other predecessors used to drive with their head out the window and it was to watch your front wheels and people say well you should just drive like a normal car no you could actually lean out of the door and out the window and you could look at your front end and judge the cars because it was so hard to see in a huge monster truck mm -hmm. and as I was leaning out the window going for the second set when it flew over and hit into the ground it just yard darted and stopped and I held on, it flipped up on its lid. And as I came out from the truck, because it was steel, there's glass breaking, there's stuff going all over, I crawled out of the truck and I look over, and here's this other truck setting up in the stand. <laughs> and, well, it wasn't in the stands, it was, it was on, on a gen set, yeah. like a big generator. Yeah, it hit the generator, Light but tower. the photographer was, I mean, everybody's over there, and I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> And it was the first, I think probably the first, double rollover at an event. And, it, you know, like I said, it was, there was a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. And they immediately come up with, uh, I think Diamond P was actually yeah, filming. Diamond P, yeah. Shove the camera in your face and you're sitting there talking. And I hadn't been with Bigfoot that long. <laughs> and all I could think of to say was, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go make this phone call. <laughs> and I guess that just hung on and it's like yeah I was a hired driver and thinking I wouldn't have a job yeah. well as it turned out Bob liked to say I was his test pilot because I would test his parts <laughs> Kramer was a smooth that was his his nickname because he was a smooth driver but if there was a part that was going to fail Gene could find it <laughs> and what we ended up doing after that was drawing lines on the front leaf springs because the center pin broke in the spring pack and let the shift the pack slide or the oh, yeah. shackle and everything slide forward. So from that day forward, we started paint marking and scribing all of our center pins where they were. Mm -hmm. And then when the mechanics, when the truck would come back in, they could look and see if that pin mark was shifted and know that we had a 
a, a centering pin and the leaf springs broke and we'd yeah. have to replace it yeah. because obviously we are starting to go faster, fly mm -hmm. farther. This were things that were just popping up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that so was. So how was that phone call though? I mean. Well, I, I mean, it wasn't as bad as I anticipated. Um, he said, you know, what well, did you win? <laughs> yeah, but you know, the truck is totaled out, but um, he's like, well, that's all that matters is it that, you, that you won. And, and that was it. And okay. I had my fair share. I got where I wouldn't call him anymore because <clears throat> it would probably get to him faster in the day of technology how yeah. advanced. Yeah. People was already sh <clears throat> sending him pictures <clears throat> of something that I did yeah. working for Bigfoot and I wouldn't have to call him. He would already be calling me. Yeah, yeah. So now was that, that was your first crash probably ever yes. in a monster truck. <clears throat> yeah, I never really crashed before but <clears throat> I almost turned one in over at the Stomper Bully doing some car crushing in, in Shreveport. It was a Ford LTD, the late 70s, they don't give. They just stand up and they just snarl at you as you're going up to hit them. And we stood it right up on the back bumper on top of the cars and I literally thought we were going back over. Mm -hmm. And then, if we would have, John Breen, I mean budget and everybody's on a budget back then. Yeah. I mean, that's catastrophic failure. Oh, that's yeah. not that's not like it is today where you yeah. throw another $1,500 body on it and, yeah. and roll to the next show. I mean, yeah. yes, today's trucks do a lot more damage sometimes yeah. underneath, and it is expensive. But the parts but the are easier part, to come yeah, by. Yeah, the parts back yeah. then, we were using real trucks. Real trucks. Yeah, so you're talking yeah. not, not only the cost of the truck, but you're yeah. talking probably several hundred hours yes. of labor. Yes. So you got to figure out how that Yeah, it's not a it. jigsaw cutting out a fender well and yeah. bolting it on and duct yeah. taping it. These were real steel. Oh yeah. So now after that, you know, how many other times did you crash? Quite a few. Uh, yeah, kind of well, trick? that was a joke, a running joke I had with Bob was because we always drove the rigs to the shows, mm -hmm. the semis. And the only way you'd get to fly home from an event, unless you were Jim, um, was you had to get hurt at the show. And so, like Pontiac, uh, Michigan, I drove number eight there and was knocked unconscious. Of course, we left the hospital and I had to set the airport for three hours to catch a flight home. Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, I got to fly home from another concussion. Um, but that was a running joke with me that, well, I got, you know, I didn't make it like I'm gonna fly home this weekend, so I'm gonna purposely go out there and get hurt. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's mm -hmm. the only time you got to fly home. Okay. I had several accidents in my career, some spectacular, some like Columbus was just upsetting. Yeah. Um, I never set out to make the highlight reel, but Bob always used to joke that Gene's a highlight reel too. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. he'll figure out something to well, do. Well, and then probably your most famous crash was uh, what <laughs> Bloomsburg was it? Where you? Oh uh, no, nope. Union Field. Where Union, was it? Union Grove, Wisconsin. Union. Okay. When we hit the ice cream stand. Yeah. Okay. All right. We were driving. So I was we on. were on the dark side, uh, the monster truck era, and I was the famous Coke Cobra snake bite driver and um, truck got out of control going between the first and second set of cars. I was waiting for the RI to shut me off, which it never did. Jumped the Yodok barriers and landed on an ice cream shed. And that's probably one of the most famous crashes that yeah. I've ever had. Yeah, to, that's to a lot over, of yeah, yeah. highlight reels oh, yeah. for years. <laughs> to run over Gary Porter was another one, but it wasn't didn't make as big a splash as mm -hmm. the, the appendant. appendant well, and that accident actually had a lot of people scared because yes. nobody really ever thought of two trucks tangling, no. one going over the other one. I mean, that's yes. that was, I remember when that happened, that was very, like, scary to everybody. Right, and, and they just uh, did a show there at Nashville, the old Nashville Speedway. And the pit area, it, just think of a NASCAR track, the pit walls are so close, and now you're putting a 12-foot wide or long, wider vehicle in there, and any little out-of-shape area, concrete doesn't give and it can just literally throw you any direction and when I landed in Nashville we got into the concrete and it stayed it just keeps pulling you into it so I turned in and jumped over the wall the little wall thinking that it wouldn't cause and there set another monster truck dead ahead of me and I literally just t-boned and drove right up over it and yes it was scary for me also because I knew what had happened I came out of the truck and I didn't even see Gary and 
my thoughts, of course, was to him, and then he came out, and he just said, you know, what the H just happened? And I'm like, <laughs> you're not supposed to turn in front of me! And it's like, that was a running joke, too, because you're supposed to go farther down the track and turn. Mm -hmm. But he was in a hurry to get back to the pit, so he just turned. He said he didn't think that I was going to run over him. <laughs> like, well, get out of my way. It's time to go. <laughs> so, so then, you know, about what year did you end up retiring then from? Um, I retired in 94 okay. from Bigfoot. And then in 1998, Jim Cramer started calling me again and was looking for some some new uh, new old blood to come back and help. And I worked in the marketing department and drove several of the trucks. And he wanted me to tra help train some of the newer guys that came in. And I worked through oh, 2001. Okay. I still work with uh, Monster Jam. Cody Saucier and the Monster Energy truck. There's a lot of guys that are still with Monster Jam that were driving back in my day or have family that drive, Mikey Waters. So I enjoy hanging out at shows and I'm not afraid to jump in and pull some wrenches because even though the frames and suspension technology has changed, the basic cosmetics or the basic machinery of the Monster trucks is still the same. And I can find my way, I can tear planetaries apart, take trannies out, put them in. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. the same. And people know that and, and they count on, you know, and I have a good time doing it. Would I like to do it again every week? No. Mm -hmm. I, it's just too much. It's, just, it's way too much. The budgets are huge. The travel time is intense and it's, it, it's just too much. Oh, yeah. Um, it's been great visiting with you. I think, I think fans are going to like this. Uh, we're hoping to see you at the Hall of Fame this year. So. One quick thing, and you can put this in either this episode or next episode, is people don't know a lot about Bob. They know they consider Bob being the father, we call him the Bob father, of the monster trucks. But he literally, a few years back, was in the pits with us helping here in Indianapolis changing planetaries and, and, and stuff out. But when we were filming the movie Roadhouse, Bob was there. And I had, we had number seven, and the, tran the, the actors blowed the tranny out because they were driving in high. And back then, we used to shift them, even though they were automatic, so you had to shift it manually. The transmission went out that night, and it was me, Bob, and another crew member. We had never had the tranny out of this truck. We just built this truck purposely for the move. We had nothing to take it out with, and Bob Chandler, was standing on a milk crate with his Bigfoot jacket on, <laughs> members only, blue, uh, gray Bigfoot jacket, with the transmission literally on his back, tranny fluid running down him, <laughs> took the tranny out, we put it in, the next morning he jumps in and we're, I'm with him, we're test driving it, going down the, the back road where we were at in California, had air brakes and the brakes weren't working and he just grabs a shifter and throws it up in reverse and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just like, I couldn't get it to stop. But he has been so hands-on mm -hmm. with all of his drivers, crew, and team members that he really is the Bob Father. I mean, I yeah. respect him to the, the highest. Yeah. He, he was there for me a lot of tough times and a lot of good times, and I'll, I'll never, ever forget what he did for me. Yeah, that's awesome. Bob's a good guy. And, yeah. and, um, you know, we enjoy seeing him at the Hall of Fame, too. So if you get a chance, come out to the Hall of Fame this year. You can get your tickets online, monstermuseum.org. Um, it's been great visiting with you. Thank you very much, and, Jeff. Uh, yes, come to the museum. It's getting right. bigger and better every year. 